Hi everyone, John Zuzga, Zuma Concepts. Uh, it's been a little while since I put out a video on how to do the Raven crossbow arrows and in that time I've gotten a lot of questions about what's the weight of the, the zombie arrow versus the Raven arrow and, and I've been doing everything I could to answer those questions but with all those questions some other stuff came up like um, how do you refletch your arrow uh, or what would be my recommendation for reflection arrow? I'm sure you guys know how to reflex one, but um, given the, the accuracy you're looking for with these aerial arrows, I'm sure that's where the question comes from. So um, I actually made uh, two separate sets of arrows. I used the executioner shaft and I used the zombie shaft. And much to my surprise when I got these, the shafts weigh the same. Um, supposedly the zombie shaft is a little bit more stiff than the executioner shaft, but I'm gonna do a deflection test to kind of figure that out and I'll share that with you guys when it's done. Um, I'm also going to refletch an old zombie arrow. You'll see the videos on that. These, these ones here are all done already, but I, I did the footage and I'm gonna show that to you here in a second. I just wanted to go through this. And I'm also gonna do a close up and I'm going to weigh the Raven uh, 001 arrow against the ones that I put together here and it, it was a little bit of a challenge trying to figure all this out um, but I did and, I, and I'm gonna link all the components here so you can build exact replica arrows that will perform the same as the Raven brand or the Raven stamped arrow. Um, I'm assuming and I don't know this yet till I hit the range but um, I believe the executioner arrow is the Raven arrow. Um, I, I won't know that again until I hit the range. I'm going to compare both of these. The you know um, Black Eagle claims that the Zombies a more accurate arrow because it's it's uh, more stiff. But again, I got to find that out for you guys and and, and let you know that I'm obviously I'm going to wait till the weather breaks. I'm in Michigan and it's way too cold to be out there dinking around with my bow. <clears throat> but I plan on putting a whole video together for you guys on how to achieve long range accuracy and some of the variables you do. And I, I'm gonna, when I do do that video, um, I'm gonna go through what I would do with store-bought arrows and my own fletched arrows. I've fletched arrows my entire archery career and I, I used to shoot my compound bow uh, over 100 yards. So I did a lot of custom work myself and, and that's where I learned a lot of the stuff that I've learned about arrows. So transferring that over to here, knowing that I'm that we're working with highly precision equipment here. Um, I didn't want to use the standard boning tool for fletching, our vein tool. So I actually did some research and I found out what a lot of the pros are using. A lot of the pros use this Vein Master Pro. Um, again, I'll link this to it's, it's from Last Chance Archery. Um, this particular um, jig costs around $280. It's really expensive, but since I've gotten to use it, it's worth every penny, man. This thing is superior. It, 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 it's incredibly accurate, easy to use, cleans up nice, stores nice. Um, and again, you'll see this in the video and I'll, I'll show you how all this works and how I used it. I actually used this um, setup to find out exactly what twist and to match the measurements that Raven uses on their setup. So these arrows are identical weight and design to the Raven setup. And in these videos, you'll see how I accomplished that. And then again, I'll show you guys some time on the range with them, but I just wanted to get throw this video together for you guys so you could see um, how to build them yourself. So here's some of the reasons to do an identical match. Um, if you have a Raven setup and you're not switching, like in my previous video, I, I recommend the HHA rest with, um, uh, a different scope setup. If you're not going to switch to that and completely recite your bow with something that's more versatile like the HHA, um, you, you almost have to do this. And the reason I say that is Raven has their system set up for their arrow. So if you're not matching their arrow, your weight's off and you're going to have some inaccuracies on long range. You're probably good out to about 50, 60 yards and you might be noticing that it's hard to get your bow to be accurate or you're having to dial it beyond what it says it is for range on your on your site. So 
going through these steps will save you some money and um, will allow you to use the same setup that you have from Raven here. And then um, during that time lapse also, I had some more questions come in about the knocks. Some people mentioned that the, the serving, uh, the, the string servings and dressings are bigger on the newer uh, cables and they're right. Um, the, the fire knock clicks in there a little bit tighter, but I actually did a pull test on it and I'll include that too in this video. So I'm going to be covering how to build an identical match to the Raven Arrow weight and design. And then I'm also going to cover refletching your damaged arrows from bump and fletchings. And uh, I'm going to give you a little information on the pull tests that I did with the uh, different knocks that are available for the Raven. So without dragging this out too long, I'm going to jump in and start showing you some of this footage of how to use this equipment and what I did here. So what you're seeing here is a deflection test that I conducted. I used a force meter and I put this board and put these pins on here so I could bend these the same way to the same point every time. And this first one is the Raven arrow, which pulled 7.6 pounds. Next one is the Executioner. This one pulls 7.3 pounds, which could just be the difference in how I pulled it. That's not much. Them appear to be the same shaft. And here's the zombie, which is supposed to be uh, stiffer, and it, it proves out to be that way. This one pulls out to 10.2 pounds to the same point. So just like Black Eagle said, they were right. Um, that one is a stiffer shaft, and... The executioner appears to be the same as the, the raven arrow here i'm weighing the raven arrow it comes out to 180 grains this is the executioner it's going to dance around that 180 mark it's kind of hard to weigh these with the the setup i have here but it, you'll get an idea how close they are just showing you this is the 20 inch 0 0.001 executioner And here's the zombie arrow, does the same thing, dances right around that 180 mark. 20 inch, 0 .001. I'm going to pull these three up here together, and we're going to look at them, and I'm going to show you some obvious differences and, and really um, kind of talk through what I found. If you look at this, the Raven arrow has a brass knock bushing. And then you look and it has an aluminum uh, insert. I had to go through a lot of steps to figure this all out, but I'll just get to the point. Um, if you use the aluminum insert, which I will have linked in the description below from Black Eagle, and you add this insert weight that I found on Amazon, which will also be linked below, and you... Um, Put those together which is what you see here i'm using denatured alcohol to clean off the oil then i'm threading them together i'm, I'm epoxying them together because that's going to get glued inside the arrow and i don't want it to come apart and um once you add those together you get the same uh front end weight on this arrow that you do from the uh raven arrow so uh like i said this stuff will be linked below and what you're seeing there is is me gluing the weight into the back of it now i'm using a round file like the one you'd use to sharpen like a chainsaw chain to clean out the inner and then i'm cleaning it out with that denatured alcohol you'll notice i didn't get much uh epoxy anywhere near the back that back piece doesn't touch that little brass weight so you only want to get that on the aluminum you want to use as you want to use enough of this stuff, but not too much that it's changing the weight of the arrow. Um, just roughed up the um, knock insert and did the same thing here. One thing you'll notice with these knock inserts is the company had changed them. They were a lot smaller and now they're quite a bit bigger. Um, they said they did it to get more glue surface so that they would um, hold into the arrow better. 
and it actually worked out to an advantage. The, the bigger um, knock insert that they're making now actually helps meet the, the exact weight measurement that you need for the um, to match the Raven Arrow. Um, this here is that um, fletching tool that I was telling you about. It has a lot of cool features on it. Um, a lot of ways to mark what, what your measurements will be and what you need and um, just kind of showing you all the components that come with it. Just slides in those two steel dowels and that, that's what holds your vein against the arrow while it sets up glue-wise. That, that's a pin there for setting your different uh, setting the different pitch of your vein and once I show you, once I get into this a little further, you'll see how I used this to find out what the Raven um, setup was. And once I have that, I'm actually going to flash it on the screen so you know what it is. So you don't have to get your own Raven arrow to test it out. You'll be able to set it up based off of what I show you here. This is the glue I recommend. And the reason I recommend it is it has these little tiny applicators on it, which work perfect for not putting too much glue on and being real precise with your glue. And uh, you'll see that when I go through the, the fletching process here. That's just some coarse memory cloth to write rough stuff up and get it cleaned up a little bit. There's the veins I used. This is me just showing you how to load this into that um, arrow vise so that you can fletch it. You gotta make sure you get that end cap on there. You can adjust that. There's a little thing you push in the side there that allows you to pull it in or out and you want that as, as tight as possible so it holds that knock firmly against that that holder you can set that up to do four veins or more um, this one is currently set up to do a three vein application that black notch there is where I set the vein and I set the vein to it every time so that I'm consistent. I'll do a close up here to show you what I'm talking about. You make sure it sits all the way down in between those two wires. And then here I adjust it so that vein lines up perfectly with that black marker. Right there. Now that's ready to get glue and then be placed on there. So here's how I figured out the Raven Arrow. I set it in here, got it locked in place, and I had to line the vein back up with the vein jig. So I, I had to pull this out and slowly move this um, twist the knock until the, the vein lined up. It took me a couple tries and you'll see here. I was still just a little bit behind it. Had to adjust a little more. Just a little more. Looks pretty good where it's at. Now I loosen up this back to let this thing float into place wherever it wants to go because it's highly adjustable but I want it to fit exactly to where the Raven arrow is and then I make sure that see that that orange gap between the arrow and the wire is like perfectly parallel like right there once I make sure everything looks good then I'm gonna tighten the back down and I'm gonna pull this out rotate it to the next vein push it in rotate it to the next vein push it in Here's where I'm uh, showing you how to line it up to that black line. This is how I set the rear measurement. I loosened that up, brought it back, and then secured it back into place. See, I'm checking it to each vein to make sure it lined up. It looks good. 
So now I have it set. Here's the settings. So you're going to put the one R and turn it to that pin and then tighten it down. And here it's 3.5 to the right of the zero. You can check your own measurements, but in case you don't have the arrow, that should help you through that. Just getting my materials set up here and ready to go. Um, putting on some of that denatured alcohol to clean this off. And I use that, I roll it over and clean out the channels where the glue go on each vein. And I did this on every single vein. Just takes a little bit of time, but you get everything cleaned up and prepped right. And you, you don't have to worry about anything coming undone on you. This next step, I rough up the area where the veins are going to go. Then I use the denatured alcohol to wipe off any excess oil or grease. Dry it off really good. Now I'm ready to fletch. Get this set in, locked in place tight. I always start with my cock feather. You can start with whatever one you want. See there, showing how I line it up to the black mark. Just showing you to, how to set up the, the glue. You gotta snip that off. Make sure you snip it until you can see a hole there, like right there. I gave it a little squeeze in case the scissors pinched it closed. And then you put on that extended applicator for more precision gluing ability. One thing I like about this applicator is you can see the glue coming through the tube, so you kind of get ready and, and can kind of manipulate it and, and be ready for the glue to come out. I kind of go out of the screen here on this first one, but um, when I do the, the next veins, you'll see it completely. I'm just feathering it down right in the bottom of that channel. You don't want to fill the channel. You just want to cover up. There's like a little line in the bottom. And then you take the applicator like that and you just kind of wash that glue up both sides. That way it's you get a good seal. Then when you're moving this into the arrow, you want to squeeze by holding the arrow too like that. My thumbs are on the arrow. There's one position on this thing that when you get to a certain point, it'll actually push the arrow out if you're not holding on to the arrow because it's sideways to the position of the knock. Only let them dry for about 20 to 30 seconds with this glue. It's a really good glue. I, I like it a lot. It dries quick. Smooth that out. And this is the one right here that it's critical you hold both sides and you squeeze it to the arrow with your thumbs on the arrow. Because there's a point there that knock is perfectly sideways right now. If you try to push it, that arrow wants to jump out of there. Right there, it'll slide out that way. So make sure you're squeezing that um, vein holder while holding the arrow, not the press. Clean in between each run and this is just me doing one more vein. Again held the arrow. That vein holder wipes off real good. Um, it's got a, a glue resistant finish on it. Here I just take and I put a little dab at the front end of each vein to make sure that you know the part that takes the biggest blast if you if you shoot this through a target or through a deer um, is the most secured if you look just a little tiny dab in there and you can see it kind of float around and seal that front end closed and then when these are drying I just rest them on the knock and lean them against a wall um, in my previous video I showed that um, Raven actually used to stamp Black Eagle right on their arrows, and here's the proof. I wanted to show this to you. I found one of these old arrows in my stash. Had the website right on it, and it had it right on the veins. 
Now, Raven has since quit doing that, probably for this reason. Somebody like me could find out where they got them from and get their own arrows. But uh, just wanted to show you guys that. I mentioned that in one of my previous videos, but didn't show it. So here is a refletch. The front end of that vein hit the target and kind of started to peel back. Whenever you refletch an arrow, I recommend removing all three. Um, just refletch them completely to, to new. And um, I usually use a defletching tool, but I didn't have mine handy, so I used this knife. You can pick them up on Amazon. They're real easy to come by. But you get this go, get these peeled off, and then you got to take the edge of the knife, and you want to kind of like go after it like you would whittle a stick. You want to just scrape it until the glue comes off. And don't get too much of an angle because you'll actually snag the carbon and peel the arrow. And if you do that, it's junk. you got to throw it away. Um, but if you're careful, you can take the edge of that knife and almost point it more straight in at it and just kind of scrape it. And it'll, it'll bring that glue off. You'll see here, I'm going to use the knife again. And it'll bring that uh, residual glue off of there. You got to make sure... Like I said, if you peel the carbon on accident, don't glue the carbon back down. You're shit out of luck. Throw the arrow away. Using a knife as an alternate option, I highly recommend you use the defletch tool. It's a lot more effective. It works way better than this. And uh, I just wanted to show you another way you could do it just in case you didn't have one. Here's the pull test I did on the... Um, knocks so you can see it this is the raven lighted knock took 6.1 pounds to get that knock to come off that was the first try second try 5.7 pounds now this is just a standard raven knock five point two pounds to release and five pounds to release that time now this one is the fire knock which I really wanted to show this video so you could really see why I highly recommend don't using, not using these. Like I, I just, I wouldn't use them. I'm personally never going to use them, and I would never recommend anyone else to use them. I don't think they're safe to use, and I think they'll probably end up damage, damaging your bow if you do use them. And for you guys that do use them, I'm not being critical of you. I'm just, I'm not going to recommend something to somebody that I don't think is safe to use. It only took 1.4 pounds, and I actually had a hard time getting it to even stay on there while I was hooking it. And here's how loose this thing sits on here. This is a brand new one on a brand new cable. It just flips back and forth, wiggles around on there. You can slide it, pops right off. And you'll see here when I put a Raven one on, it moves the string. It grips it so tight, the string moves with it. It won't flop, it doesn't spin, it doesn't slide. There's no chance that that string is going to slap the back of the arrow and send the arrow ahead of the string and then end up essentially creating a dry fire. I highly recommend you stick with these Raven um, knocks. They're just a better quality and they're better set up for this. Here's the lighted knock. Again, it moves the string, really tight grab. And here's one more shot of the fire knock. Barely locks on there and just falls the second you touch anything goes against it. It's just, again, I do not recommend you use these. All right, well, there you have it. Hopefully what I showed you in this video helps you out. Hopefully this is gonna save you some money trying so you don't have to do the research yourself again everything in this video is linked below to help you out um, 
If you have any questions or comments, throw them in below. I'm really good about getting back to you guys. If you got an email you want to send me because you don't want it on my comment page, my email's down there too. Go ahead and send me an email. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if the, the answer is too complicated, I'm going to throw a video together to help you out. And uh, again, guys, I'm just looking to get you some information and help you out with some different ideas. I'm not saying everything I do is, is the best or only way, but it certainly works well for me. And I've had a lot of success with it. So good luck out there. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.